What if, as a runner, there were only three exercises you could ever do again to help you run strong and run injury free? I thought that was a really interesting idea, interesting question, and something we could take a closer look at right now. So let's get into it. Okay, so of course, there are hundreds of different exercises, if not thousands of different exercises you could be doing, and different weak links that we each have as runners, which lead to different types of injury history. That makes sense, that's what we see amongst runners. But we also see a lot of common patterns. And I thought to answer this, we could break down using those patterns into three different areas and pick three exercises to look at those areas. So to begin with, we've got general strength. So we know we need to build strength through our quads, through our hamstrings, through our glutes, through our calves in particular. We've then got single leg balance and stability. So we need to do something to address the fact that we're always landing and loading on one foot. We need to be able to stabilize and control. We also then need to work on calf conditioning and ankle stiffness. And there are so many injuries, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendinopathies, shin splints, calf strains, just to name a few, which come from poor conditioning, amongst other things, of the calf and lower leg. So we'll pick something to address that too. Let's start out with general strengthening. And I really like a split squat. Now I call it a split squat or a static lunge, whatever you want to call it. But in this position, we need to firstly think about position of the pelvis. So we're not just gonna arch your back and shift forwards into a lunge here. Instead, I want to draw your belly button in, squeeze your butt, and from here, I want you to come down on one plane of movement. So we're straight down from the hips and from the bottom here, you're gonna push through your heel and come back up to the top. As you come down into the movements, you'll feel a stretch down the top of the front of the rear thigh through those quads and hip flexors, especially if you're tight through there. And as you start working through three sets of 15 on each side, you'll feel that your quads and glutes in particular will be working hard in the front leg. Now, with this, it's important that we control the position of the knee of the front leg. So as you come down into the movement, make sure the knee is pointing forwards over the second toe, rather than drifting in or flaring out. If you need to hold on to something, do this beside a wall, that's absolutely fine. And if you wanna make it harder for yourself, grab a couple of dumbbells. A couple of dumbbells or any weight will add a bit of external resistance that you have to work hard to push against on the way back up. That will make your life a lot more challenging. Now, when it comes to single leg control, single leg stability, we could do things like a single leg squat, single leg deadlift, but I really like the challenge that comes from our runner's arabesque. So, let me show you from side on. I'm gonna stand on one leg, starting hip flexed on this side, squeezing my butt on the standing leg. From here, I'm gonna reach back with this leg, Keep my back straight as I reach forward with the arms. Looking to come to parallel here, then come back up, squeeze my butt, drive the knee through. Slow and controlled. As I'm on my way down, I feel in the standing leg, the lengthening through my hamstrings. It'll feel like a good hamstring stretch as those muscles really work to eccentrically control the forward movement of the torso, the weight of the torso coming forwards above. Great hamstring conditioning. Now, it's important with this that slow and controlled is the order of the day. So don't rush it. Focus on the balance of the movement and the control of the movement. And you'll feel how you're having to work hard around the hips through those glutes to control the single leg stance. Now, it may be that you can't do three sets of 15 right from the off. Break that down. Do five, five, five with a break in between, focusing on good form every time. Slow and controlled, over time, those fives will become eights, will become twelves, will become fifteens. It's all about practice. Now, the third exercise I wanted to choose was all about calves and ankles, building a bit of conditioning and a bit of stiffness into that whole region. And for me, the best way, very simply, to do that is with some light plyometric work, some work using our skipping rope, so jumping rope. Now, little and often is the best with this. So five sets of 20 seconds on a four or five times per week basis is plenty with this, and it's all about quality. So 
With this, we're looking to keep the bounce coming through the ankles and everything else stays fairly rigid. So engage your core, keep your feet together, your knees together, and focus on control. Now, from here, we are simply working for 20 seconds, just feeling the bounce coming from the ankles. Now, with that, it doesn't matter whether you're a forefoot striking runner or a heel striking runner, midfoot striking runner, anything in between. Ankle stiffness is actually a benefit for all runners. And if you want to find out how to improve your foot strike in general and improve your running form from ground upwards, check out the video right over here because it'll help you do exactly that. Now, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more videos to help you run strong and run injury free. And I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye now.